The Natural Resources Defense Council was founded in 1970 when a handful of lawyers got together in a small office in New York City to create, literally, a legal defense team that would stand up for nature in a court of law. At the time, we were seeing corporate polluters ravaging our waters, wildlife, and lands unimpeded for no greater purpose than plunder and profit. The earth, we felt, needed a good lawyer. And remember, just the year before, we'd had a disastrous oil spill off the coast of Santa Barbara. Los Angeles was becoming the smog capital of the world, and waste coursing through the industrial heartland of our country was so thick that rivers in Ohio literally caught fire. There was very little environmental law to speak of. Our government simply wasn't organized to fight polluters or to prevent pollution. And so we took a page out of the Civil Rights Movement playbook. After all, civil rights heroes like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., John Lewis, Andrew Young, Julian Bond, and others had taught the world how to use legal precedents and constitutional law to oppose segregation and to bring about needed change. We believed we could do something similar for our environment, and we've been at it now for 40 years. We've had a lot of success. We're getting better all the time. We've still got a long way to go. Right now, the House majority is waging the single greatest legislative assault in history against the foundational safeguards we all depend on to protect our environment and health. We're working night and day to turn that back. We're pushing for clean air rules that will reduce the mercury and other toxins that we know can cause development disorders in children. We're calling for reductions in the soot and smog that promotes asthma, bronchitis, and heart disease. And we're fighting the industrial carbon pollution that is warming our planet and threatening us all. Long term, we see challenge and opportunity in a clean energy future. We use more oil by far than any other country on the planet. And we get half of our electricity from coal. We need to start shifting away from our dangerous dependence on fossil fuels and toward greater use of wind, solar, and other sources of clean, safe, renewable power. We have to improve our energy efficiency so we can do more with less in our workplaces, homes, and cars. And it's time to put in place the environmental safeguards we need to prevent unbridled oil and gas drilling from putting our waters, croplands, and wildlife at risk. That's never been more important because we're in the beginning stage of an epic boom in the domestic production of oil and natural gas. We have to get this right, and we won't get a second chance. These are big challenges but they also present us with unparalleled opportunity. The global clean energy sector is going to be worth at least $3 trillion over the coming decade. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of jobs. It's the next great industrial revolution. We want American workers to have the tools they need to succeed in the global contest for the clean energy solutions of tomorrow. That's the way to strengthen our economy, make our country more secure, and create a healthier future for our children. We stand up for the environment in three ways. First, we tell the truth about what's happening out there to our water and air, our wildlife and lands. We want the public to know what threatens us today and what's over the horizon. Second, we work with our elected officials to help put in place the policies we need to safeguard our future. And finally, we use the law as a tool to hold polluters accountable wherever and whenever they pose a threat. We've been at it for 40 years, and we're not going away. Our supporters know that. Our opponents know it, too. That's part of what makes us credible year after year. At NRDC, our mission is to stand up for nature period. We do it three ways. We educate, we advocate, and we litigate. We focus on those three strategies because that's what we do best. And nobody does it better than the NRDC. When Congress took up comprehensive energy and climate legislation in 2009, 
Our president, Francis Beinecke, published a paperback book, an Amazon bestseller, explaining the problem and the solution in common sense language that helped change the conversation. Our legal team has been instrumental in keeping dozens of dirty coal-fired power plants from being built in recent years. We're seeking a court order to compel our federal government to stop agribusiness practices that are fostering superbugs that resist antibiotics. And in the wake of last year's nuclear power plant disaster in Japan, our nuclear experts are pushing for reforms here in this country so that we learn the lessons of Fukushima to make us safer at home. In advocacy work, influence is the coin of the realm. We build influence through leadership. To us, that means three things. Vision, a clean and healthy environment for all. Wisdom, the solutions we need to get us there. And courage, standing up for the people who are doing the right thing and standing up to the people who aren't. Vision, wisdom, courage. That's what leadership means at NRDC. That's how we build influence. Influence doesn't mean control, as anyone who's tried to parent a teenager can tell you. And again, a bit like raising a teenager, you don't surrender your influence just because you can't control every outcome. We don't control the national economy, and it has a big impact on our work. We don't control national politics, and that has a big impact on our work. And we certainly don't control the Congress, the White House, or the Supreme Court. We do, however, exert enormous influence over those institutions, and we measure our success by how much we're expanding that influence and how effectively we're using the influence we have. That's what makes NRDC the most effective environmental advocacy organization by far in the world. The NRDC culture. You have to live inside the NRDC for a while to appreciate it. And once you do, you'll want it to be forever a part of your life. Our people are the heart and soul of the organization, and our people share a common culture. We're inquisitive. We ask questions. We want to know how. We want to know why. We want to know when. We search for the facts, the bedrock truth. What does the science tell us? How do the economics work? How's it going to affect American families, moms and dads? We're inclusive. We want to hear from all sides because we never know who's going to come up with the answer. And we're a big family because we know we can't complete this mission alone. That's why we're always searching for answers, for partners, for the solutions we need to ensure the healthiest possible environment for Americans everywhere and eventually for the world. The NRDC has played a vital role in establishing the foundational laws and safeguards that have protected our environment and health for four decades. Our people were instrumental in the creation of the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, and the protection of public lands. We helped put climate change on the radar screen, and we continue to work today to shore up and sustain these important policy initiatives. But we're in the mix every single day. We've played a big role in the national campaign to stop the Keystone XL tar sands pipeline. It's a bad idea and it needs to be stopped. We've worked closely with the administration to help protect our workers, waters, and wildlife from the risks of drilling for oil and gas at sea. We were instrumental in the effort to bring government and the auto industry together to set new standards that will double our auto fuel efficiency by 2025. We helped with the new rules aimed at reducing the industrial carbon pollution that's warming the planet. And we've worked to make sure a lot of bad legislation that passed in the House hasn't gotten through the Senate. That's important, because in a hostile political environment, avoiding damage can sometimes be our greatest success. Our greatest challenge, ironically, is to survive our greatest success. We've made a lot of progress over the last four decades as a country in cleaning up our environment, and the NRDC has been a big part of that progress. 
but we've still got a long way to go. We can't afford to get complacent and start to believe that somehow the job's done. It isn't. Not as long as we still have rivers and streams choked with pollution. Not as long as millions of Americans are still breathing polluted air. Not as long as the health of our wildlife is threatened, oil spills poison our oceans, and industrial waste still ruins our land. Not as long as we are still so dependent on the costly, damaging, and dangerous fossil fuels of the past. There is so much work to be done, and we can't do it all ourselves. We need to keep building partnerships across this country, bringing our supporters, activists, and policy experts together with the business community, our political leaders, our environmental justice groups, and so many others. And this is not something, by the way, that one party can accomplish. Safeguarding our environment is bipartisan work. It will take Republicans and Democrats working together to preserve our natural inheritance for future generations. Right now, getting the two parties to cooperate is a challenge. But we have to keep at it. There's simply no choice. The stakes are too high for anything less. We have the vision in place and the solutions and the accountability we need to lead the environmental movement and to lead this country in the direction we need to go. Where we have a real opportunity now is in building our capacity to implement that leadership in several promising ways. First, we have new opportunities for telling our story in ways that help build on the national consensus for environmental protections. Our website has the best content in the business. We want to make that more accessible to a greater number of people, and that, to us, is a capacity issue. Our social media work, Facebook, Twitter, and all the rest, is often cited as some of the best in the nonprofit world. But this is a rapidly evolving and expanding field, and we need to strengthen our staff to keep up in a way that takes full advantage of the possibilities the new media world presents. And we want to expand our ability to amplify our voice in the moment and on the platforms where it's most likely to be heard. That means first-rate deadline writers who can craft op-eds, letters to the editor, speeches, editorial board memos, and other tools of the trade that help us to influence the opinion leaders in our communities and across this country. With additional resources, we can leverage our leadership by amping up our voice, and that's a top priority in the coming months. The NRDC has flourished and our mission has thrived through what I would call a tenacious institutional will to seize each opportunity and rise to each challenge. When we learn that some of the biggest polluters in the country are paying scientists and writers to mislead the public about climate change, we want to make sure the story gets out to everybody in America. When we find out that members of Congress are putting polluters first, and putting the rest of us at risk. We want the voters to understand whose side the politicians are on. And when new developments in science or policy or law open the door to potential mischief or gain, we want to do everything possible to make sure the cards fall on the right side of the table. With a job this big and a mission this great, we can never, ever do quite enough. We're the best in the country at what we do, but every one of us knows in our hearts we can always do more. It's that striving, that pushing, that always wanting to win that makes NRDC what it is. The best environmental advocacy group, bar none, and the Earth's best defense. <laughs>